What's up, guys? Well, I'm going to uh, show you guys how to set one of these uh, ion net tops up to play uh, HD videos. Now, I'm not really going to actually show you, show you, because I've already done it, and I couldn't think of a good way to show you guys without sitting here going like this, which would get really old real quick. So instead, I'm just going to show you guys what you need to do. So, step one, I'm going to include this, uh, this web page that I use that one of my friends showed me in the description box so you guys can follow along yourself. But basically what you need is a operating system, XP, Service Pack 3, Vista, or Windows 7. Obviously Windows 7 is recommended. If you're a Vista user, you need to get an update. Now, instead of doing what they say here with the whole downloading that, uh, Media Player Classic. Now, instead of doing that, what I did is, no, I don't want apps. Go away. We're going to go to Google. Now, just type in Combine. Oh. It's hard for me to freaking type and watch what the camera's doing at the same time. Yep, there we go. It'll show up then. Combine Community Kodak Pad. And then just download it. I've already done that. If you've just got your uh, PC and you don't have DirectX and all that stuff installed, when you download this program and uh, attempt to install it for the first time, it's going to say, hey, you don't have DirectX. Do you want to continue? Just say no, and then it'll be like, hey, do you want to install DirectX? And then hit yes, it'll take you to download the online installer, and then just install it. Then double-click on the icon again and actually install the program. But since I've already done that, I don't need to do that. Then, go and download Hala Media Splitter, which is this one right here. You can either go to the original website or just click here. I just clicked there. Download it and install it. And then you've already got DirectX if you downloaded the Combined Community Codex Pack like I told you. Now when you install that uh, media splitter, make sure to uh, untick that option. And if you somehow forget to do that, you can always go into the program settings, the options tab, go down to output, use custom media type for H.264 and select that to no. And then open up uh, Media Player Classic and hit O. And it should bring up the options, with it, which will look just like this. Now go into the play the playback option. This is more for watching anime, but if you're watching some foreign movie or something that has subtitles, you're going to want to also click that option, auto load the subtitles. And then after that, go into the output again, the output, and uh, if you're a Windows XP user, you want to choose VMR9 renderless. But if you've got Windows 7 or Vista, you're going to want to go to this custom. And then uh, just leave them as system default, unless you... Uh, are on Windows 7 because that's what this guy's using so I just copied him and did DirectX 9 and I also went to uh, Blenair, I can't pronounce things to PS 2.0 and then you're gonna want to select what uh, your audio renderer is it'll be different for everybody so just go through that uh, list and you'll find your sound card now, I just did what he did and I enabled everything over here, but you really only need those two for MKV files. 
but I just went ahead, like I said, and did everything. And then on this side, make sure these three are unchecked, because that will mess stuff up. Now, you're going to want to go over to external filters and add a filter. And we want to get rid of this FFD show video decoder because it'll get in the way as well. And then you're going to want to select block. And then you're going to want to repeat this with direct Bob sub, which comes with that Kodak pack. So you're going to want to disable that. And if you have core AVC, disable that. DivX decoder filter, get rid of that. Cyberly, get rid of that. Because those will all mess with what we're trying to do here. Now, if you are into anime like I am, we're going to want to go into the subtitles, allow animation when buffering, which should be already ticked or checked, whatever you want to call it. And then you're going to change this to desktop. It should be defaulted to 800 by 600 if I remember correctly. And then make sure that in the default style section of subtitles that this is checked position subtitles relative to the video frame then click OK and then we're going to get into the renderer settings so you're going to want to just open up Media Player Classic and hit O again, or not hit O this time just right click and go down to renderer settings output range you can choose whichever one of those looks better to you I'm using 0 to 255 myself and then we're going to want to go to the same thing and go to presentation this time. And you're going to want to enable these four things. As long as you're on Windows 7, that is. If you don't, then you're going to want to read down this and uh, follow it yourself in your own way and not listen to what I'm saying. And then we're going to want to go... To the VSync again, render settings again. VSync, turn off VSync if you're using Windows 7. If not, do what it says to do in the instructions. And then, one more step is we're going to go to render settings again, GPU control, and enable everything there. Unless the uh, and again, unless you're running a different something different than Windows 7, and then that basically is uh, done. So I've got my little uh, CPU usage and all that stuff selected up there so I can show you guys that this is working. So first we're going to start with a, uh, a smaller file. I believe this is 480p. Hack sign. Let me just turn this to Japanese subtitles. And now see, it's using the ion instead of the uh, atom. The atom is only going around 22-21%. If, if we didn't do this, this would probably be like at 80 by now. And as you can see, it's playing perfectly fine. And if we full screen it, it still plays perfectly acceptably. No loss in frames or anything like that. Alright, I don't want to get this muted for stealing stuff. Now let's just try the highest resolution thing I've got. Alright, let me... And then... Again, that's only using 16%, and this is a 1080p file. And then if we full screen it. Plays flawlessly, no lag, subtitles aren't getting out of sync. 
So there we go. So basically, if it can do anime in 1080p with subtitles and all that other crap, it can play basically any HD files you can throw at it. As long as they are hardware accelerated. If it's not a, uh, a file type that supports that, it's going to run like crap. Unless it's really low resolution. But most high def stuff that's going to be played on these is obviously designed for it. Now, I've got a flash video here set up. This is John 4 Lakers testing out the iPad 2. It's in 720p as you can see. And it plays 100% flawlessly. And here's what the uh, ION and the uh, CPU is just doing. So, it can do that no problem. So, yeah, it plays YouTube videos in HD just fine. So this is going to be a great little uh, HD box, or home theater PC, whatever you want to call it. It's also very quiet, and I even have a 7200 RPM hard drive in there, and it's still quiet. It's not getting that hot. But anyway, that uh, concludes this video. I will include that website that I had in the description box so you guys can just follow along if you happen to be using an older operating system or if you just don't understand what the hell I'm talking about. I think I did a pretty good job though. But uh, till next video, peace out guys.